What's up everyone? My name is Megan. I'm an artist here in New York City. Excuse me, Brooklyn. Welcome back to painting in your pajamas. Today we're painting in our sweatpants because it's cold and my heating bill is like outrageous. Con Edison, you're a whole bunch of con artists. You make no sense to me. I'm just gonna like live in sweatpants and I got my comfy socks on. This is the second episode of this ongoing series. And today we're focusing on my second favorite artist of all time, Yayo Kusama. If you haven't heard of Yayo Kusama, I'm not trying to shame you, but you should climb out from under the rock in which you live and participate in the world. Yayo Kusama is perhaps the biggest, most well-known contemporary artist. She is in her 80s. She has been on the avant-garde art scene since the 50s, 60s. She has revolutionized the experiential art experience. She has created environments that are sculptural, she has created what we now know as the Infinity Mirror Experience. She is a radical artist who has been living her truth her whole life. I have all of these books about her. She wrote a memoir, Infinity Net. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. Kusama is living the dream because she lives her dream and she makes it a reality and she is therefore one of the coolest most amazing artists on earth so we're going to go through her book and we're going to look at a lot of her floral sculptures these are sculptures that she's very well known for and we're going to take them from the three-dimensional realm and we're going to put them on a two-dimensional canvas surface I love the colors of them. I love the way that they speak in the environment that they're in. They really gravitate your attention. They, they consume you as the viewer. So I really love these two. And this one I think is really great. Okay, let's get started. This is Genmaika. Green tea in my Yeti. Yeti, I love you. Hot. So for this painting, we are going to use a bigger canvas than we did for the Hilma off Clint painting because the sculptures are so large and they just consume the viewer. Obviously this canvas is a lot smaller than the sculptures that Yayo makes, but this will give us a lot more room to play. All you're going to need for colors are yellow, red, green, and blue. You can mix tons of different colors with those primary colors and we're going to do some mixing together so you can see how you can mix colors. So the first thing that we're going to do is answer the phone. Hello? Spam. So the first thing that we're going to do is because this sculpture is outside You know, I just changed my mind. I actually don't want like an outside looking background. I want to do yellow. I just feel like yellow is going to be a really pretty background. So let's do that. I have this darker yellow, it's a thicker paint. It's almost empty. And I'm going to use this as my mixing palette because since it's almost empty, I can dump a whole bunch of other paint in there and kind of mix it up and then not have any of the paint in here go to waste. So I have a couple different yellows that I'm gonna mix. Look at that beautiful yellow. This is a very bright yellow, which actually, now that I put it on the canvas, I really like it. I was thinking that we would put a little bit of white in there so it would mute the background. There are so many bright colors in Yayo's work and especially these floral sculpture pieces that I think we're gonna stick with this really bright yellow as our background. As you move this paint around the canvas, longer strokes will help you get a more even coverage. 
So I always recommend doing long, sensual and slow strokes so you can get a nice even tone to cover the canvas. Make sure you don't forget your edges. Edges are kind of like contentious in the art world. Some artists don't think you need to cover your edges and some artists do. You need to cover your edges. Like, look at that. But look at that. You see what I mean? It looks so much better. Whoa, whoa. Well, it was bound to happen. Oh, okay. Edges. I'm just doing this so I can try and be in the frame. It's actually easier if you're wondering to lay your canvas down on some surface that you don't mind getting paint on and then you can just take your brush and rub it or brush it against the edges and then you can get paint on whatever surface that is. We now have our painted canvas. So like we did with our Hilma piece, we're gonna practice drawing first before we put anything on our canvas. I was thinking instead of going completely 2D, we're gonna try and like do a little bit of like a 3D drawing so we can get some of that 3D vibe going with our painting. We're gonna take an, the overall shape of this flower. Now what I like about these flowers is I feel like I can take that shape and kind of run with it. I don't feel like the flower has to look exactly like it does in that sculpture. This flower has an eyeball shape but for the practice that we're gonna do on this first flower, I made an irregular shape. And I'm just gonna look at these petals and loosely do my own rendition of them. And I'm just kind of practicing what I want my flower to look like. I don't really know what I want it to look like yet. So I'm like, maybe I want it to look like that. And you know, I kind of wanted to have this like 3D element to it. We'll look at some of these stems. They have this like curly kind of vibe to it. So I'm not, I'm not really focused on making it look perfect. I'm just playing around. So this is a potential flower design. I don't know if I really like it yet. So let's just keep practicing. I'm just taking this loose inspiration. I'm not really worried about perfection today. I'm just kind of taking loose ideas and seeing what I like the most. I'm just playing, which is the most important thing you can do in an art practice, is experiment and play. And not judge yourself so much if it doesn't come out the way that you want it to. I've never drawn a yayo flower. So if it doesn't come out perfect the first time around I do it, I'm not gonna judge myself so harshly because I've never done it before. It's okay to practice, it's okay to try. So we're gonna combine this, this center part with this center part. And we're gonna see what we get. And again, we're holding our, our marker loose. We're not letting the marker control our movements. It's kind of like you're just like bouncing in air. You know, you're just allowing the pen to softly fall. So she has the eye shape here. I'm gonna try these circles around my eye. I wanna see what that looks like. Okay, so I really like that. I think that's a nice design to, to kind of go on. So we're gonna take the three drawings that we've just done. This was our first one, our second one, and our third one. I'm still not really sure what I'm gonna do on the canvas, but I have a better idea of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kinda let the canvas guide me. I just wanted to practice on the page, so I, I didn't you know, practice on the canvas and I didn't mess up on my first try. That's the great thing about practicing. I don't really practice on paper that often. These videos have actually helped me put that more into my practice. I normally just go and, and do things on the canvas and then sometimes I completely mess up a piece and I probably wouldn't have done that if I had more of an idea of where I was going. Sometimes 
I don't practice and you know the canvas comes out really great but I do think it's really nice sometimes to have a little bit of an idea of what you're trying to do. So that way, when you go to the canvas, you're more comfortable with your vision and you have a better idea of what you're trying to do. I think I'm gonna do two flowers. I think that'll look really cool. You can do your flowers however you want. This is your painting and this is the chance for you to exercise your creative curiosity. If you wanna do a whole bunch of flowers, do a whole bunch of flowers. If you want to do not a lot of flowers and you just want to do one instead of two or five or whatever it is that is on your heart, this is your chance to do that. So I really like this flower for my first flower. And I'm just going to take, and I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to add the circles. And then just to get some more cohesiveness on my flower, I'm going to add something around here. Our petals are floating here. And I want to add something that closes it around so it has like a little bit more tightness around it. What do I want to do? Mm -mm. Maybe I want to actually just make these defined lines around the circles. And then that'll give something for my petals to hold on to. I really like these petals the most out of the three that I did for this flower. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm not going to think so much about it. I'm just going to kind of let whatever happens happen. So remember as you're doing your flowers, the 3D aspect is going to be on the right side. So this is where I'm going to put my stem. You know, she has these swirly things for her stems. So I'm going to kind of try and do that. It's a little bit out of my nature to do these swirly stems. So as it turns out, I did my first flower pretty giant. I don't really know if I can add another flower on here, but I do think that I'm going to add some polka dots since that's a big motif in Yayo's work. So instead of doing two flowers, I'm going to do polka dots. But if you have room for two flowers, you should totally do two flowers because I think it'll really make the painting look very cool. This is my, my pencil rendering, my sketch of the Yayo sculpture flower painting. Now, as I mentioned before, we're gonna work with primary colors on this piece for the beginning. I know I said that we we're gonna do primary colors for the whole thing, but then I saw my neon paints and I was like, oh my God, neon is so perfect for Yayo. So we're gonna start the base with our primary colors and then we're gonna move on from that. So if you don't have neon colors, that's okay. You can at least understand how to mix the base of the colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our red paint and we're going to mix it with white to get a pink. We are going to see what comes out when we use more red than white. I want it to be more red than white because Yayo's paintings have that brightness to them and I want to maintain that consistency on my painting as well. I think this is a really good place to start. So the first pet part of the petal I'm going to do are these bigger parts. So I'm going to take a medium sized thick brush, something that's smooth on the edges and even on the edges. I want it to be all one level. That's not the way to describe it, but I want it to be even. And we're going to try with this brush. Whoa, I love that. I am loving this pink. I think it looks really good with the yellow. You don't want to worry so much about the edges because we are going to outline our edges. So don't worry if your edges aren't perfect. They will eventually look perfect. A more angled brush is better for the smaller corners because I can angle my brush without having to move the canvas. I really love the way this pink looks. 
It looks amazing, it matches with the yellow perfectly. I'm just really excited about it. So we're gonna do the dimensional part. And to do the dimensional part, we're gonna take the same pink and we're just gonna make it a little bit darker so we can have the consistency of color. So we're gonna take our red, I'm just gonna put it in the center there so I have a little bit of a darker red. Maybe I'll take a little bit more. And then I'm gonna see what that looks like. That's a little bit too similar. So, you know, I'm gonna experiment. I'm gonna see what the red looks like. Maybe the red will have a nice contrast. So I like the red just alone. I think that gives it a really nice dimension to it. And the reason, again, we're doing those dimensions is because we're working off of a sculpture. You know, it's a 2D rendition of something that's 3D. So we want to we want to pull in that three-dimensional aspect a little bit. So now we have our dimensions on the canvas. So my camera died. I went a little rogue and I kept on painting while my battery was charging and I also went rogue from using primary colors. Forgive me but I'm gonna show you what I did while my battery was charging. What I did is I took some neon paint and I just added it on top of the petal to give it a little bit more of a yayo vibe. So you can kind of see right there, I put this neon pink just to give it a little bit more of a pop because that's kind of what yayo did. And then I took this neon orange and I mixed it with white and I did these circles. And then once those dried, I just did another layer of this neon. So then I took the light blue and I added them onto the circles and then I took a teal and I added it on the center. And then I did dots in white in the center on top of the teal and I'm doing a darker blue of dots inside of these dots. I just, I felt like painting while my battery was charging. I was just on a roll. You know, you get in a flow state. So the stem, we're gonna do more of a primary color green. And I'm just gonna take this green and go in my stem and my leaves. While we let this dry, we're gonna start adding dots around our canvas. Before I get it dry though, I really want to take a little bit of this neon yellow. Uh, let's see, I just want to take some of the neon yellow and give our flower a little bit of three dimensional, or just maybe not even three dimensional, we're just going to give our flower a little bit more of a color pop by adding in that neon yellow. I think what's really great about Yayo's colors is she doesn't fear clashing colors. She just uses a ton of different colors. I thought it might be interesting to see what this light blue looks like against the green. I'm gonna use a brush I've already used because I like the way that it forms dots. It's a rounder brush. And I'm just gonna take these globs of paint and make circular motions. While these dots dry, I'm gonna start outlining our flower. Now, with the Hilma piece, we did white outline, and I think for the Yayo piece, I wanna do a black outline. I think that'll look really nice with this piece. As you're doing these, you wanna be very careful. Your hand doesn't drag on the wet paint. I do that all the time. I'm gonna do this eye shape first because I have it overlapping these blue circles and I want to maintain the integrity of that line. So I'm going to focus on that first. So now that everything else is outlined, I'm looking at these polka dots and I think it'll look really cool if I outline them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It'll give it consistency throughout the piece. As I was outlining, these orange dots, I thought it might be really cool to add another color inside of these white dots. And I think doing the neon pink will give it a nice flare and a nice pizzazz. That's not an idea that I had in the beginning, 
but I really like it. And you know, now that I did those pink details in those white dots, I kind of want to add some more. I wanted to add the contrast of the white because it'll make those orange dots pop out a lot more. So as I was waiting for these to dry, I noticed that these white circles don't have black circles around them and I want to add them. It'll like really fill in the center. So now I'm going to add the black outline around the stem and then I'm going to go around the blue dots. So I really think that I darkened it too much with the black marker there. So I'm just gonna take a very small brush and dip it in some white and make little tiny circles around them to offset the darkness of these black circles. As this has been drying, I've been thinking about what I wanna do to the background. And I think I wanna do white dots Whoa, look at that tangle. <laughs> okay, never mind then. Back to art. While the camera battery was charging, for the 17,000th time. I was thinking about some of the things that I would change in this painting. This is the first time that I've ever painted a Yayo inspired painting. And for the first time, I think it came out pretty good. It looks similar to her three-dimensional floral sculptures. And that's what we were trying to go for in two-dimensional form on a flat surface on this painting. A couple of the things that I would change for next time Inside of the flower, we had the dots, they were white. And then I put black around them. I like the small white dots and the black there, but you know, I think it darkened the middle of the flower a little bit too much. And then the other thing that I would change is um, to be a little bit more structured in the use of polka dots. I couldn't decide here if I wanted to keep them white or put pink around them. And that's again why I think it's so important to practice something before we do it for the first time so then you have a little bit more freedom on the canvas. I think we're probably gonna do another Yayo inspired painting for the Painting in Pajamas series because it was so fun to do. There's a lot of freedom and flexibility with use of colors and shapes and patterns and textures in her work. So I think it's a really great, a great way to start experimenting on canvas for a beginner painter or even an advanced painter. I had a lot of fun with this. So thank you so much for tuning in to this second episode of painting in your pajamas. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really love doing these. They're so much fun. I don't have to get dressed up. I feel like it's such an accessible way to create space on the internet to paint while you're at home in your pajamas hanging out on a Monday afternoon or whatever day it happens to be when you're watching this. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Um, hit the subscribe button if you want to keep in, in touch with the life of Megan Jane, which would be me. And I hope that you have a really great afternoon and you had fun painting this Yayo Kusama inspired painting.